What's up guys, it's Goth, and I'm coming today to talk to you about the PlayStation 4. Now, I've been a little critical of consoles in the past, I think with good reason. There's still plenty of criticism to go around for this current gen, specifically how it is still pretty far behind um, from a hardware standpoint. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We're going to talk about what I'm really liking about the PlayStation 4. Um, I might touch on a little bit what I don't like, but I'm mostly going to focus on the good because I'm going to say it, I love this console, and pairing the PlayStation 4 with the PS Vita this generation, I might just be a PlayStation fanboy for this console generation, but I will still always love my computer and NVIDIA products a bit more, but this PlayStation 4 is excellent. The, uh, the UI is quick, it's snappy, you can go between the store and your homepage and games with ease. Uh, you could attribute that to the GDDR5, which is very, very quick memory, and it's usually only used in, um, in graphics cards, but the entire system seems to utilize it on this PlayStation 4 console, which makes it so if you are in a game and you hit your home tab, you go straight to the home screen, like really, really quick, really, really responsive. You know, I'd, I'd compare it to uh, alt tabbing out of my system, and sometimes it might even be a little bit quicker than alt tabbing on a PC, albeit that there are a lot more processes going on on a PC. and. Um, Alt tabbing might just take a couple seconds, but this takes, it's very snappy to go back to your home screen um, and go in between apps. And you can have quite a bit loaded up. The store is pretty streamlined. Uh, downloading seems to be much quicker on the new console than on the old consoles. Again, you can attribute that to a faster processor and more memory. Um, and also, I'm sure that the uh, PSN infrastructure has seen many upgrades since the PlayStation 3. So, um, yeah, the, the UI is very cool. My only complaint is it takes a little bit for the system to load up and a little bit for it to shut down. Um, when you're first installing a game, you can play it. But it wouldn't really recommend it. Load times really suffer if you're uh, playing a game while it is still downloading or or, inst or or while it's still installing. So I would recommend waiting until it's installed to get the good experience because it loads into games very quickly. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hit Shadowfall and I'm gonna load into it. And you're gonna see that this game loads up very, very quickly. Again, you can attribute that to the RAM, you can attribute it to be full installed on the hard drive, whatever have you. It does not take very long. I think this takes about uh, 20 seconds to load up and I'm all the way on the home screen. Now this is much faster than previous generations and it's even faster than some PC games if they're loaded on a hard drive. If you're loaded on a solid state drive, it's gonna be much quicker. If you have a solid state drive installed on your PlayStation 3, it is going to be very very, very zippy, and it's actually a pretty easy process. So let's talk about the controller that's packed with the PlayStation 4, the DualShock 4. I'm holding one in my hands right now, so if you hear me clicking, that's why I'm actually, I, I love this controller. I have two complaints about it. Um, one, I prefer staggered sticks. That is a preference thing. You might not like staggered sticks. I like staggered sticks um, just because I feel like it gives me better access to the D-pad without having to um, not be moving with the left uh, analog because I play a lot of first person shooters. So that D-pad, taking my right thumb off of it or left thumb, taking my left thumb off of the analog stick and going to the D-pad sort of feels clunky to me. I don't like that. That's why I like the staggered sticks, but that's again, preference. Um, I like the touchpad. Um, I see a lot of cool stuff happening with the touchpad. I um, I would love to see Sony put out uh, drivers that enable the touchpad um, gestures on PC. If Sony doesn't do it, clever modders will do it and will have access to this touchpad. I think that this controller is the controller for PC gaming if you're gonna use a gamepad because it has a lot of cool features on it with the touchpad. It has more inputs than the Xbox One controller does. Xbox One stayed with the same amount of inputs as the Xbox 360, and I feel like that was a mistake. That was a little bit of a 
um, error on Microsoft's part because with this touchpad you could a use it as a mouse on the PC you could say when you're aiming down your sights with a sniper rifle you could use it to aim with and be more precise than using a thumbstick uh, you can use swipe gestures for changing your weapons and using abilities and that would be much easier than using the d-pad so I really see the PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 controller being the the controller of the future for PC gaming. That is that is my opinion. Again, this whole video is sort of my opinions, and but I tell you, I love this controller. Um, second complaint, it's a little light. That's not a big complaint. Uh, I wish it was a little bit heavier, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, I'm not going to crush it. It is a very sturdy controller. It has these little grips on the back that I've noticed have really cut down on like palm sweat which is sort of a thing with gamers. Like you get a little palm sweat on it and you lose your grip, but these grips on the back are excellent. The triggers are fantastic. Um, it, they're not so loose that you don't have to, uh, or that you that you will just press without trying, but they have enough give and just enough looseness to just be really nice triggers and your fingers just sit great on them. The sticks are easily my favorite sticks that I've ever used on a gamepad. Uh, they have pretty much no dead zone on them and they're amazing for first person shooters if it was staggered i would seriously coat this controller in gold and call it the champion of always but um we're gonna it's uh, just i'll i'll i will work with it uh, i'll be fine um so i am actually using this controller exclusively for pc gaming now um my xbox 360 controller has taken a seat because I, I love the sticks on this thing. So now that we've covered the hardware, um, the games are quick, the games are, they're beautiful. Um, for, for console, it is beautiful. Uh, everything is very uh, quick and streamlined and it's using a lot of cool uh, PC tech that, um, that uh, uh, da, 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 we've gotten used to on PCs. So now that we've talked about that, let's talk about my favorite feature for uh, the PlayStation 4, and that is remote play. On home Wi-Fi, the remote play feature works perfectly. It's very easy to sync up. It's a very short process, and you'll see it in the bottom left-hand corner of this video, uh, me connecting to my PS4 through the PS Vita. The setup process only takes about, I don't know, a minute and a half to actually get the first sync going, but after that, it's as simple as going to PS4 connection on your Vita, hitting the button, selecting remote play, and then you're loaded straight over to your PlayStation 4 very quickly. Um, remote play on the PS4 runs, uh, I think it is locked at 30 frames per second. Now this is an acceptable frame rate, but coming from PC and shield streaming, and shield streaming does 60 frames per second, though most of the time it feels like 45, but they are improving it. I don't know that there is much wiggle room for the PS4 uh, hardware for them to mess with that video encoder and the software within, but I'm not gonna count it out just yet because I really like this feature. It is very crisp. You can tell that the um, bit rate is a little low on the PS Vita if you're really anal about it. Um, controls like clicking in sticks and the secondary triggers are put to the to four quadrants on the back touch screen, which feels really weird um, if you're coming from a PS4 controller over to the PS Vita, because you're used to having two shoulder buttons and you're used to being able to melee or sprint with your um, pushing in your sticks, but those buttons don't work because the sticks on the um, on the Vita do not push in and there's only two shoulder buttons and they're not analog shoulder buttons, they are just simply uh, digital shoulder buttons. But all that aside, it is an awesome feature. Uh, the, the PS Vita is not the most comfortable handheld to, to use for first person shooters, but I see this feature working really well on anything but FPS games. It's playable on FPS games, especially on home Wi-Fi, because I got upstairs and outside in the road and it still worked. I didn't have any input lag on my home Wi-Fi. And since I did testing outside of the house with the Nvidia Shield, I thought it would only be fair if I did testing outside of my home Wi-Fi. But as you can see on home Wi-Fi, it works great. So if you're in a house with multiple people, but only one TV and say somebody else wants to take over the screen, then you can drop in, drop out with your Vita. Now this is a feature that is completely missing on Nvidia Shield. And I'm gonna be in Nvidia's ear about this because I think it's kind of major that you cannot 
drop into a game mid-session and start streaming to your shield. On Vita and PlayStation 4, you can do this, and this is an awesome feature, and I give Sony a clear win in that category. As far as quality and uh, stability goes, the Nvidia Shield and the GTX card still win, but that's to be expected because it is better hardware. But for the cool feature of drop in, drop out, streaming, and taking over your console from the Vita from anywhere, Sony really has a winner in my book. For my next test, I was out to breakfast with my wife and I thought, hey, I'm going to test uh, remote streaming over 4G LTE like I did on my NVIDIA Shield. Keep in mind on my Shield, I was 110 miles away from my house and it worked perfectly. We were in a restaurant. That's my lovely wife. Anyways, so I decided to test it over 4G LTE. I am only about 5 miles from my house here and the connection process took, um, as expected, a bit longer to sync up with my PS4. But once it did, the results were not all that fantastic. Um, I did notice a pretty clear amount of input lag, and there was also a lot of bitrate artifacting. That's where blocks of the screen just become these like sort of jumbled mess of, uh, of uh, pixels and, and what have you. So remote streaming over 4G LTE did not work well. Now you can attribute this to a number of things. One, um, the PS Vita hardware just isn't as uh, zippy as the Nvidia Shield. Um, two, uh, I might not have been in a great area for 4G LTE, though I was in, I'm, I live in a pretty big city, I'm in Tampa, and I did have five bars on my phone. So I don't know if we can attribute it to that. But as you can see, this is me connecting in game. There is a bit of input lag. Sometimes it feels spot on and was working, but other times it would just completely break up. Now this load screen took a while, so I'm just gonna fast forward back to the action. Now, as I said, there are areas in this where it is perfectly playable, but as you can see, it, there's a bit of stuttering, and right there, that artifacting, that is major. That's just complete dropouts in connection. Um, but I could see this working better over Wi-Fi. I did test it on a Wi-Fi outside of my home and it worked much better. The input latency was much better and there was only a little bit of artifacting here and there, not nearly as bad over 4G. So if you want to go on a Wi-Fi outside of your house, connect to that and then connect to your PlayStation 4, that is an option. But if you're gonna tether it to a 4G phone, you need to make sure that you are in a really stable area for connection. But all in all, the tech is awesome. And as you can see, it's running pretty smooth right now, but it does break up here and there. But, I mean, this isn't even what it's designed to do. It's designed to work on your home Wi-Fi, but it can work tethered to 4G, and it definitely can work if you're using it on a Wi-Fi away from home. While I would not put it on the same level of quality and stability as streaming on an NVIDIA Shield, I would give this a solid score. I, if I had to score it on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say I would give uh, remote streaming out of the house a 7.5-ish. Let's, let's use arbitrary numbers. It works, it's not perfect, not quite as good as the Nvidia Shield, but it is an awesome product. And um, the remote streaming does work, but if you're just looking to use it inside your house, it is awesome. And the quality in comparison to the Nvidia Shield is very close, although the frame rates do get to me, but I'm a bit of a uh, PC elitist. So yeah guys, that'll about wrap it up. All in all, really love the hardware really love the controller there's a lot they're going to be able to do with the playstation 4 hardware you have to keep in mind how shitty games looked when they first came out on xbox 360 and playstation 3 and how good they looked towards the end of the life cycle or even midway through the life cycle i think in a year or two we're going to see some really stunning games that are taking full advantage of the hardware that's in the playstation 4 and xbox one you have to also realize that games are, you can make them uh, uh, work better on consoles. It's easier to, to, uh, um, to get games to run well, to optimize them on consoles um, than it is on PC currently. 
Uh, that's So you'll be able to get pretty much slightly better visuals on the PlayStation 4 than you would on a, um, a hardware equivalent PC. Now I'm running a, uh, a, a Falcon Tiki with an NVIDIA GTX 780, so my computer is about three times the power of the PlayStation 4. So, But I'm excited because usually uh, PC graphics go hand in hand with what's out on console. So the better that the shit is on console, the better it'll be for PC, and the better it is for everybody. So all these PC snobs that are like, oh, well, this is shit, well, they're missing out on experiences. I'm going to get the Xbox One, I have the PlayStation 4, and I have the PS Vita, and I'm I'm really looking forward to what I can do on my PC, but also there's experiences that you get on these consoles that you will not get on PC. Like that's what gamers need to, to get in their heads is that just because it's on your rival's hardware doesn't mean it's shit. I mean, there, there's games on Xbox One that are going to be just amazing, and there's games that are going to be on PlayStation 4 that are going to be outstanding, and then you're going to have your PC games that are only on PC, and of course PC is always going to have the edge uh, with graphical fidelity in mind, but you have to look at the big picture. So yeah, guys, I really like the PlayStation hardware. I love remote streaming. I wouldn't recommend using it outside your home Wi-Fi or outside of a very stable Wi-Fi if you want a solid gaming experience. But on your home Wi-Fi, it's a perfect, a perfect experience. It runs at a solid 30 frames per second, which is eh to some people, but it is more than playable. And it also has a little bit of a, a derpy um, bit rate, but it's still great quality. So yeah guys, I would absolutely recommend getting a PlayStation 4 once they're readily available because if you didn't pre-order one, you're not going to be able to get one. I will also do a review on the Xbox One once I get one, but I don't think that'll be for a month or so. I only really budgeted to get the PlayStation 4, but I am getting an Xbox One. I'm going to have everything this generation because I want to experience everything and I definitely don't want it my bias towards PC to interfere with with my gaming experience and I don't think you guys should let it uh, interfere with yours if you can only afford one console then look at the exclusives but if you can afford to get everything then for the love of God just get everything because I mean as gamers what do we want good gameplay so yeah gang don't forget to rate comment and subscribe and keep it locked to my channel for everything PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita remote play related See you next time.